Photoshop or GIMP? A surprising matchup. In one corner, we have a scrappy underdog graphic design tool in GIMP. In the other, we have the 200 pound undisputed golden child in Adobe Photoshop. But which of these dueling graphic design programs comes out on top when they go head to head? When it comes to Photoshop versus GIMP, there is a lot to consider. Both are robust image editing software options for image editing at all skill levels, but only one is the industry standard. Does one shut out the competition, or is there room for two titans in the industry? Well, if you want a little skin in the game, please check out the notes below the video for details on accessing Adobe Creative Cloud through a subscription. Uh, Creative Cloud offers a robust suite of creative tools. We're happy to connect you to great graphic design software. And best of all, you can receive a 40% discount through our link. So go ahead and snag your copy of Photoshop and join along as we explore the difference between Photoshop and GIMP. So let's start the bell and compare Photoshop versus GIMP to determine the winner in this graphic design software title match. Ding ding. Remember, we'll be using a rating from one to five with one being avoid and five being must have. We'll start our comparison with the reigning champion, Adobe Photoshop. You need to start with Photoshop when discussing graphic design because, well, it frames the entire discussion regarding other software. And that's what comes with being the industry standard. So we first need to point out that this is a paid software, unlike our other competing option, GIMP. Until a few years ago, you could buy the software outright, but now Adobe Photoshop is entirely subscription based. With the subscription model comes some added complexity of tiers and packages. For example, a standalone subscription to Adobe Photoshop costs $20.99 a month, whereas the Adobe Photography Plan features Photoshop and Lightroom and one terabyte of cloud storage for $19.99. Hey look, of course you could spend $54.99 a month for the entire collection of Creative Cloud apps. Not even more complicated, if you're part of a business or educational institution, you can get different apps and subscription bundles from Adobe at wildly different price options. To simplify things, Let's average it to about $20 a month for the essential Photoshop. It's pretty affordable, right? In all, hey, not terrible. One downside of subscriptions is that previous software versions are no longer available for purchase. Another downside is that Photoshop updates frequently. So it risks introducing new bugs or suddenly not working for your computer as system requirements change between significant releases. Thankfully, you can run back a couple of older releases just in case. But even those disappear after a time. But wait, there's more. The advantage here is that Photoshop constantly updates and adds new features. The subscription model feels safe and nice at $20 a month and potentially adds value with each patch. So when it comes to the price, you're looking at about a four out of five. But what do you think about the subscription model? Let us know in the comments. Now you can expect Photoshop to be on the cutting edge. Most graphic design programs are compared to Photoshop since Photoshop can accomplish many essential tasks. Layers, layers again, the pen tool, vector masks, and many photography adjustments are available. Many professionals rely on Photoshop for filters, actions, layer styles, and powerful text editing capability. The newly enhanced Move tool makes editing things out of photos even more effortless. There are also recent additions such as adjustment presets based on standard and popular techniques. Through AI enhancement, Photoshop can automate a crazy number of tasks. For example, currently in beta testing is generative fill, which allows you to add and remove content from an image using simple text prompts. However, the biggest downside of this feature-rich software is that Photoshop is a resource hog, a real chonker, if you will. You better have a fabulous computer to take advantage of the more recent features. Otherwise, performance will take a hit. Plus, Adobe Photoshop takes up a fair chunk of your hard drive, especially when you factor in the weight of uncompressed Photoshop files. And what if you decide to have a previous version of the software installed? In the off chance, the latest release is bugged. Despite the annoyance of bloat for the software and how intensive some features can be on memory, nobody can ignore Photoshop's sheer number of tools. Photoshop has been going above and beyond competitors for decades and is the standard that other programs hope to reach as far as parity goes. As far as features go, Photoshop gets a 5 out of 5. There is an incredible amount of information about Adobe Photoshop online, and there is a nearly endless amount of resources, ranging from websites to brushes and templates to YouTube videos like this one, that explore every nook and cranny of the software. The creative community surrounding Photoshop is gigantic, especially as it's a common feature across multiple industries. 
That all goes to say that you're in luck when finding resources for Adobe Photoshop. You will have plenty of options. It's kind of hard to think of a downside here, except maybe it sometimes feels overwhelming. Look, it's not uncommon to Google search for a solution uh, for an issue in Photoshop and then get sidetracked by something else. The amount of free stuff you can integrate into Photoshop is ridiculous, ranging from brush packs to color palettes, actions, uh, custom shapes, and beyond. If we were to throw in another downside, it might be that it's just far too easy to hoard plugins and resources that you're never going to use. At least that is how it is for me. It's hard to find much to criticize the support options for Photoshop. You are well covered by an expansive community of users at all skill levels. Regarding support features, well, Adobe Photoshop is a five out of five. But hey, while I have your attention, what are some of your favorite Photoshop resources? Hopefully us. Please drop a like if you're enjoying this overview on Photoshop. We need to be objective here when it comes to giving Photoshop an overall rating. The fact that the software is so heavily used across dozens of industries and has such an extensive pool of resources and features works well in its favor. There are concerns about the pricing and subscription model, which ultimately reduces user choice. There is also the fact that Photoshop is a beefy program that requires increasingly powerful hardware if you want to get the most from it. <coughs> Adobe Photoshop is the gold standard of image editing software, and it's hard to compete with this. When we averaged our scores, we hit a four and a half out of five, which is fair. The $20 subscription is worth the money. Now we turn our attention to the scrappy upstart in the ring, GIMP. It's arguably one of the biggest challenges to Adobe Photoshop's dominance of the image editing game, and that is for plenty of good reasons. However, this open source alternative faces problems that Adobe's flagship product does not, which could affect widespread adoption. If Photoshop is the industry standard, then, well, GIMP has a lot to live up to. And you'll see, however, that GIMP is plenty robust as well. The first thing that GIMP, uh, which stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program, has going for it is that it is free. That's right, it's a free software. And it is so accessible that you can contribute to its development as GIMP is open source software. Users of all skill levels can contribute by submitting bug fixes or reports, adding new features, or writing and translating documentation. As of the time this video goes up, the community is currently developing version 3. However, the downside to the accessible price point is that the software's development is very much at the whims and interest of volunteers. Nobody gets paid to work on it, so you'll wait for long periods between updates than Adobe Photoshop. But again, <laughs> the price is free. You can download and distribute GIMP as much as you wish, and it's not going to cost you a dime. Given that the software is free, it's free real estate. It should be an instant download. As far as the value goes, as we run down the features, you'll be surprised to see how much this volunteer-driven program can accomplish. Development takes a while, so be prepared to wait for new features and bug fixes. As far as the rating goes, GIMP's price earns it a 4 out of 5. GIMP can prove surprisingly robust as an image editor, featuring layers, color correction, and basic vector graphics features. GIMP even features a foreground selection tool, making separating elements in an image easier. On top of that, GIMP has parity with Photoshop in transformation and retouching tools, meaning that you can do nearly any photography edits that you can think of. Son of a bitch. Even better, since GIMP is a community-driven project, users can add plenty of features through an extensive library of plugins to help make up for some of the missing elements in the base install. GIMP also runs on Linux, unlike Adobe Photoshop. However, as good as GIMP is, it is missing some features that many might argue are essential to image editing. For example, while Adobe Photoshop offers non-destructive editing tools such as adjustment layers, GIMP does not. Further, GIMP lacks proper CMYK support, making print projects a little more of a chore compared to the native CMYK features of Photoshop. With that said, GIMP's low install size is a highlight. GIMP is lightweight, easily distributed, installed, and can run off a flash drive, meaning that you can take it anywhere. Given the portability and a surprising number of features included in such a small package, GIMP gets a four and a half out of five. Are you surprised by the number of features shared between GIMP and Photoshop? Let us know what you think in the comments. One of GIMP's strengths is a small, passionate community, which is also a downside. 
There isn't nearly as much of a presence on the internet for GIMP resources as for Adobe Photoshop, and that means it might be a little harder to come by information in comparison. Also, the developer's vision may exceed current resources. Many features are on the way for future GIMP releases, yet with a volunteer development team, they will take a while to appear. Given the scarcity of resources, well, fortunately, GIMP gets a 3 out of 5. However, that score will undoubtedly change as GIMP expands its user base. Given the hurdle of directly competing with <laughs> the industry standard Adobe Photoshop, GIMP is surprisingly robust and feature rich. Still, it does need more industry standard options to be a complete replacement. As great as GIMP is, given its portability and passion, it's just not there as a Photoshop replacement for many industries. Giving GIMP a rating, it sits at a comfortable 4 out of 5. Not quite a knockout against the champ, but it does put up one hell of a fight. So, who is the software for? The big difference between GIMP and Photoshop seems to come down to cost. But when you look deeper, there's something more significant. GIMP offers affordable editing and web-based imaging, where Photoshop for more extensive editing and CMYK and print design. As far as GIMP users go, hey, I can see it focusing on a niche of small businesses, casual photographers, influencers, and budget-conscious pros. Regarding Photoshop and its ridiculously extensive user base, well, I see it as a tool for design agency workers and professionals without budget concerns. But what do you use the software for? Are we on the mark here, or are you a unique user? Let us know how accurate we are. So between the two, what should you get? In most cases, my money is on the heavyweight champ Photoshop, especially if the subscription isn't a problem. With that said, I also use GIMP and keep it on a flash drive on my keyring because you never know where inspiration strikes. Considering I can do 90% of my Photoshop work in GIMP, with it being completely free and portable, hey, I don't see why you wouldn't have both. If you want to dive into Adobe Photoshop, do me a favor and please go check out the notes below the video of a link to a special subscription offer for Creative Cloud. Our sponsored link will get you hooked up with the best image editing software in the industry. And remember that this is a whopping 40% discount on a subscription that you will definitely want to take advantage of. But thank you so much for watching. We do hope this video has been a big help to you in finding the graphic design app that best suits your unique needs. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. You do not want to miss any of our other design videos, which you can see linked right on the screen. Happy designing. Bye-bye for now.